Now to one match, second chance. Our ongoing series about the importance of bone marrow donation, 10 years after one saved my life. My doctors, doctors Robos and Geralt, are here. Can't wait to talk to them in just a moment. But first, how an important advancement in donation helped save a young woman's life who was facing an aggressive blood cancer. I was working full time, the mother to a three year old child, and I found myself getting increasingly tired. In the blink of an eye, Kirsten Reamer discovering her life changing diagnosis. He came in and he just said, You have leukemia and you're very sick. Kirsten, at just 34 years old, needing a bone marrow transplant with no suitable adult matches, including her own sister, doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering suggesting another way. It was a sense of relief. We have a chance for our family to be all together again. When the option of a cord blood transplant was proposed to us, we didn't know what it was. Cord blood, a rich source of stem cells collected from the umbilical cord and placenta after a baby is born, helps improve odds for a match. It's what gave Kirsten a second chance at life. We are transplanting a neonatal immune system, and that immune system allows us to be able to transplant cells that are not a perfect match to the patient. It is frozen in public banks that allows us to be able to transplant patients urgently. This is particularly significant for people of color who are least probable to find a donor, only 29% likely for African-American patients. Treatment technology such as cord blood transplantation is going to be incredibly important for us to be able to level the playing field and extend transplant access to patients regardless of their ancestry. While Kirsten has made her full recovery, she is now spreading awareness on the growing options available. I'm six years out of transplant and I feel great. The fact that the technology was there for us is something that I will always, always be grateful for. So incredibly happy for her. Dr. Gail Robos, an oncologist and professor of medicine and director of the leukemia program at Weill Cornell Medical College and Dr. Sergio Geralt of the Hematologic Malignancies Division at Memorial Sloan Kettering here in New York. That's a mouthful for both of you, oh my but God. you're a dream team. <laughs> it is so wonderful. It's great. Wonderful to see you. To see you. I know. And to possible. see you fully clothed. You yeah. have a gown on, so this is, this is changed. But isn't it wonderful? These are faces, beautiful faces, of those who have received a bone marrow transplant, much like I did. And I was so blessed that Sally Ann, my sister, was a match and was really astounded that that only happens about 30% of the time that a family member is a match. So then you have to go to the registry or other options like this cord blood transplant. What, Dr. Robos, does this mean for your patients? It's an incredible advance because look, we can't find donors for, or couldn't find donors for a lot of people. So cord blood has allowed us not only to expand the donor pool, which is incredibly important, but it's more than that. Actually, there might be some AML or acute myeloid leukemia patients for whom cord blood transplants are actually better. Mm -hmm. So the advance is not only to expand access, but to actually make transplant better, safer, and more accessible, which is tremendous. I'm amazed sometimes I'll meet somebody on the street and they said they had a transplant like two weeks ago or something like that. You were doing these transplants, Dr. Geralt. And I remember when you had the syringe in my room and you were going, go Sally, go. You wanted your healthy stem cells to go. But just talk about the advancements that have been made in the transplant in the last oh, 10 years. Robin, over the last 10 years, thanks to people like you who participated in clinical trials, a lot of patients who have participated in clinical trials, we've made major advances. When you had transplants, you had to have a fully matched donor or a very good cord blood. That's no longer the case. Wow. We now have technologies that allow us to do mismatch related or unrelated donor transplants, which makes participating and be the match even more important. We're a much more diverse population now than we were 10 years ago. We need more and more younger donors. Because I remember how it was stressed, perfect. You had to have that perfect match. And that's not the case. The science, the technology, 
has really advanced, hasn't it, Gail? Not only that, it's also the drugs that we use in addition to the transplants. There have been incredible, incredible changes mm. in um, how we deal with things like graft versus host disease or complications related to transplant. Even beyond the initial matching process, the advances are tremendous. And I'll tell you, most people real don't actually know that you're not definitely cured if you get a transplant. Mm -hmm. The assumption is if you get a transplant, you're definitely cured, except that isn't the case. And now we're doing things like manipulating the transplants or using medications even after transplant to prolong remission, keep people mm -hmm. in remission, and ultimately get more people out to where you are at 10 years. I know, yeah. I'm so incredibly thankful to you both. Let's talk about those that are doing the donating. The donating. I remember Sister Sally Ann um, when she was having her stem cells collected. Have there been advancements in that regard as well, Sergio? So there has been significant work doing in the graft, right? So the collection process is more or less the same. You either do a bone marrow, you do a stem cell, the way Sally Ann did. What happens is after the cells are collected, we're working to either make that graft better so that your recovery is quicker or make that graft more effective so there's a less chance of the leukemia or the MDS coming back. Mm -hmm. The donation is much more or less the same. It's We're trying to make it easier for the donor. What's interesting is whenever we've asked donors, they've always come back yeah. and said it's been one of the best things they've ever done in their life. My sister said, she felt it was the reason why she was born. Uh, it yeah. is incredible, yeah, really. you're right. Yeah. And it's an easy process to find out if you can be a donor. Can you show us, Gail, I can, please? it's an easy process. And I'm allowed to call them Gail and Sergio, <laughs> okay? I'm not being disrespectful, okay. they, they insist so, that. So always. can you just show about how it's just simply swabbing? the inside. This is possibly um, only harder on live TV and because I have to look at camera five. <laughs> okay. But other than that, so mm -hmm. here's the swab. You're not supposed to eat for about an hour or drink for about an hour. Okay. No problem there. And your mouth should be dry, which is very easy on live TV. <laughs> and I'm going to swab and you talk. Okay. okay. So tell them about just, so that's just a simple process like that. It's very simple. And remember, I mean, the one thing we asked donors, when you swab, mm -hmm. you swab to commit that when you're called, you're going to be there. It really is painless. The donor collection process yeah. is really fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. You either give yourself shots and then the cells are collected as if you're donating blood. Or yeah. in a certain cases, we do a bone marrow under general anesthesia, but really the most important thing is you are saving a life here. Yeah, I know, and it was very simple for my sister uh, yeah. as well. And you wanted, to say, you wanted to say something about donating the cord blood yeah, I mean, I think I just don't want to mix people up that okay. we're talking about adult donors and we're talking about cord blood. And you can do both. You can be an adult donor. You can sign up for Be The Match. But also, if you're having kids, think about donating a cord to one of the cord blood banks. And that's a, a simple conversation, actually, to have. I donated both of my children's cords, by the way. And it's a process um, that is simple for mom to do and another way to be part of the bone marrow transplant cure and miracles that we're trying to have happen here. No, oh, I can't tell you how many times over the last 10 years I hear from people who are patients of yours and are so grateful, so grateful to how you treat each and every one of your patients. Dr. Gail Robos, Dr. Sergio Giraud, wonderful to see you. Wonderful Robert, see and you. thank you for all you do for Be The Match, by oh. the way. You really have helped us get literally, literally, literally hundreds and thousands of donors to replenish, replenish that donor pool. It's the wonderful GMA viewers. Thank okay. you both. And you can swab to save too. You can scan the QR code on your screen to go to Be The Match website for everything you need to know to become a donor and save lives. Tell us that you've done your part with the hashtag GMA swab to save. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.